Hi guys, my name is Patricia Elliott and I'm the author of Her Lover's Face and Not You Again, amongst other stories. I want to thank you for joining us today and if you stuck around since earlier this morning, that is awesome. It's, I'm happy to have you here. What I thought I would do during my time um, is read to you a little bit of my book. So let's get right to it. Emma sauntered her way back to the kitchen and dipped her finger into the icing again, earning her a second tap on the hand. Don't make me tie you up, woman, he warned, his lips curling into a grin. Ha! You don't have the guts, she replied, dipping her finger into the dark chocolate goodness a third time. His cock twitched as she sucked the creamy icing off her finger. Her eyes watched him, daring him to act. He couldn't very well back down from a dare. He untied his apron, placed it on the counter, and rinsed off his hands. The cake would have to wait until he dealt with his unruly food thief. Leaving her in the kitchen, he jogged up the stairs two at a time and ducked into his bedroom. If he remembered correctly, there were a few ties hanging in the closet. Pulling open the doors, a smirk spread across his face. Bingo. He was right. Staring back at him was a row of silk ties. Bondage wasn't something he had contemplated before, but the thrill rocketing through him made him wish he tried it sooner. Devin chuckled. His life was turning into Fifty Shades of Grey. He grabbed four of them off the rack and went back downstairs. The kitchen was surprisingly empty. The house silent. His little rebel had become a magician and disappeared. He stared at the cake on the counter and then at the ties torn between the need to finish icing the dessert or following his desire to hunt her down. As much as he liked eating, having his wicked way with her sounded a lot more enticing. The growing ache in his pants battled with his growling stomach. Food always hit the spot, but the idea of sex hit an entirely different area. Powered by the caveman inside him, he went on the hunt for his missing prey, armed with silk ties, the best in the business. Oh, Emma, he catcalled as he wandered through the house, listening as he went. This time, they didn't have to worry about Sky barging in. She was staying at a new friend's house, which meant tonight he could work on spoiling his almost wife. Show her what he could offer if they stayed together. Searching for her reminded him of playing hide and seek as a kid, but the reward was going to be so much better. Even his friend down below knew it. He was raring and ready to go. Devin couldn't remember being this horny since God knows when. Hell, not even since he was with her in high school. They had a connection he couldn't even begin to explain. After searching the main floor, he stood in the living room with his hands on his hips, puzzled. There was no way she was up on the second floor. He would have heard her walk up the stairs. Every step creaked and groaned. It would have been hard to miss, but he might as well check anyway. If you don't come out, I'll eat the cake myself, he yelled. No response. After searching the last room in the house, he stood there scratching his head. Where could she be? He walked back to the living room and looked around, his eyes honing in on the key rack next to the door. Bingo. The car keys were missing. Sure enough, there she was, sitting in the passenger seat with all the doors locked and a huge grin on her face. He walked up to the passenger door, still carrying the ties. She stuck her tongue out at him. Unlock the door, Em. She shook her head. Don't make me come in there. With a smug look on her face, Emma held up the keys, dangling them in front of him. What a little tease. But she failed to recall one thing, and he was more than happy to rain on her parade. Aren't you forgetting something, he asked. Emma stared at him blankly. What could she possibly be forgetting? It was hard to concentrate when all she could see were the ties swinging in the light breeze. The army of butterflies in her stomach fluttered wildly, pounding against her organs. He actually wanted to tie her up. She'd already used up her holy hand account for the entire year and couldn't think of anything left to say that suited the situation. Good golly, Miss Molly. Jeez Louise. No, she used those too many times, too. Devin stuck his hand in his pocket, and when he pulled it out... The edge of a keychain came into her line of view. You can't escape, sweetheart. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on the reading of my story. I hope you guys have a good rest of the night. Bye-bye.